and welcome to another the veg grower podcast live gardening chat i have no idea why i'm calling it like that it's just a very long name how are we all doing um hope everyone's had a great weekend had a great week it certainly has been a really really positive weekend here down at veg grower podcast but i'll get into that a little bit later on now, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, uh, a bit later on, I want to talk about crops in pots, as the title suggests. Just want to find out what crops you're growing in pots and what techniques or tricks have you used. Before that, we'll go through what I've been up to over this last week. But first of all, let's see if anybody is actually watching. And yes, Bally Cillian out there straight away. Good evening, Richard and the Veg Growing Army. Good evening to you. Billy SBB, hello everyone, busy day planting sweet corn, excellent. Uh, Andrew Norris from Croatia, evening everyone, very wet in Croatia. I'm anxious to get my squash plants in the garden, but I guess I'll have to wait a couple of days. The garden, however, is very appreciative of the water. I could do with some rain here, I could I would say that. Uh, Bally Cillian says, I was roasted today at the allotment. Uh, I don't know if that means he was too hot or his... Uh, Fellow allotment tears were roasting him. Uh, who else have we got? Adrian is out there. Good evening to you. Anna Jones is out there. Good evening to you. Rebecca Hawkins is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Jenny Hallett is out there. Hello, everyone. Hope you've all had a great week. Jenny has... Sorry about that. Uh, Jenny has contributed a lot to this evening's show, I've got to say. So big thank you to Jenny. And I'll show you what I mean a little bit later on. Uh, who else? Idaho Garden Girls out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Adrian, uh, sorry, Graham Arnold is out there. Good evening to you. I said Adrian because that was the one above it. Uh, Richard Golden is out there. Good evening to you. Um, Nicola Cornish Heaven is out there. Good evening to you. Stuart Jackson, evening, Richard and the Veg Army. Hope all is well with everyone. Good evening to you. Hargrave Gas is out there. Evening already. Looking forward to this one, as most of my attempts at growing are in containers. Uh, Ian Beddoes is out there. Good evening to you. Kate Spratt is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Hand Felted Creations. Good evening from Anis. Good evening to you. Uh, my dad's out there as well. Good evening to you. So what have I been up to over this last week? Apologies if you can hear Roxy barking. She only seems to do it when I go live on a Sunday these days. Uh, so uh, just bring up my notes. What have I been up to over this last week? Well, I've been down the allotment in the evenings, which has been fantastic. Really enjoying just finishing work, popping down the allotment for 20, 30 minutes, just doing a bit of weeding and watering and not having to worry about it. Now, that, this meant that I went down the allotment yesterday morning. Uh, I ran around with a strimmer and the mower, cut the grass areas, I didn't have that much more to do. I've lost a pumpkin plant that has suffered from stem rot from water getting on the stem. And I've planted out my sweet corn down on the allotment. So I'm very, very, very happy with that. Then yesterday I set up my brand new small veggie pod, which is going to be my herb growing container garden this year. Um, fits quite nicely with what we're talking about tonight and then today I've mowed around the veg patch here at home I found some chard that had self-seeded so I've, I've dug that up and popped it in somewhere else I'm having to water it quite regularly because it has gone limp it doesn't like being transplanted chard fingers crossed it's going to be okay but we'll keep a close eye and see if it does work if it doesn't it's not the end of the world it's just a free plant um what else? I think there goes Roxy. You're parking. Other than that, I've been tending to plants in all the pots, mulching, etc., etc. So over to you guys. What have you been up to over this last week? Uh, in Beddoes is saying hi to Roxy. Hello, hello, Roxy. Uh, Oracle was asking Stuart Jackson, how did the sales go this week? Um, and the fisherman, good evening to you. Hi, Richard. Any plot update videos coming up? Yes, I keep meaning to shoot them. Um, I keep meaning to shoot a, 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 a video around my plot. And to be honest, I keep saying this, I struggle with 
shooting videos when I feel like I should be working on the plot. It feels like it takes my time away from actual gardening. So it's a bit of a dilemma. And then there's the time editing as well, which is all here, there, and everywhere. This, I, I, it sounds like I'm making excuses. The truth is I have very, very little time spare, um, which is partly why I like these live shows because they're so in easy. Uh, Oracle says Roxy wants to be part of the show. Let her in there. If I let her in, she won't come in. Um, let's see. Let's see. We do this every week. We do this every week. If you want to come in, Roxy, come on in. I have to open the door a bit more. There you go. Let's see if she actually comes on in. Nope, she's run off. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, have I still got time to sow sweet corn? Thanks, team. Uh, yes, there's still time to sow sweet corn if you get on and do it quite quickly. It's actually quite a good time to sow sweet corn. Uh, you can sow sweet corn directly outside it for that matter. Uh, Toby Stream, good evening from the camper van. You haven't got rid of it just yet then. So lovely to hear it, see you. Uh, Rebecca Hawkins, I've just got back from Chelsea. It was amazing. My first year and loved every minute. Somebody sent me some photos from Chelsea, which we're going to go through as well. Uh, I wish I'd gone to Chelsea this year. I really do I wish I'd gone to Chelsea this year. Um, apologies again for Roxy. She's really loud tonight. Um, reason I haven't gone to Chelsea, every time I've applied for to go to Chelsea, I get turned around and told um, that I can't they can't allow me to record any audio for Chelsea because the BBC has broadcasting rights. So I tend to um, I tend to avoid it for that very reason. I, I don't quite know why the BBC was challenged by myself and my podcast, but there you go. I wish I, I really wish I had gone, especially on press day. It's just a shame I wouldn't have been able to record anything. Perhaps next year. Perhaps next year. Uh, Beatrice, good evening, everyone. Hope you're all well. Good evening to you. Uh, Kate says, oh, sorry, Stuart says, I always sow into paper pots when so when I plant things out, I don't plant the roots, etc. No sale this week, but I have taken about £20 on the table outside my house. That's still pretty good, isn't it? From outside your house. Are you in here now? No, she just came in and went out. Uh, Kate says, I've been on a bushcraft survival weekend. That sounds like my kind of weekend. So not much in the way of gardening, but I can now start my alarm fires with a flint and steel. Yeah, that's great fun, isn't it? Great fun. In harnessing my inner bear grills. Uh, Tommy Stream says, no gardening as such this week. Just back from a very last minute trip to Pembrokeshire. Yeah. Um, Hannah Jones says, looked like a very good Chelsea. I've watched every programme. I ain't got TV anymore, so I haven't been able to watch it. Uh, Oracle says, Stuart, you should have sold them for the sales. They would have been a good seller. Inter yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, Jenny says Chelsea was amazing. And Turbo Stream says the van goes on Tuesdays. So Jenny says that Chelsea was amazing. So this feels like a good point to start hitting off and talking about Chelsea and how it ties in with our crops in pots discussion tonight so jenny went the other day and she very kindly sent me a few photos of some of the crops in pots that she found at the show um so here was one of the balcony gardens which you can see there's a few pots full of various plants all looking rather nice and lovely and in different areas so what i quite like having that grid on the back with them up high I really really like that makes you think about things a little bit differently here's a better shot of them as well as a few on the worktop what a great outdoor space though what a great outdoor space uh and obviously pots on a patio where they're attached to the the railings which i think you know, if you haven't got much space, this is just a great idea. Um, this is charred in a rather large uh, pot and also a mini greenhouse with various plants and in pots growing as well. Uh, and again, back to these balcony gardens with various pots and containers all growing plenty of crops. Now, this greenhouse, I found this to be a bit interesting. There's um, 
this greenhouse on the outside obviously there's no parts but if you look just on the inside you see cacti and a lot of cacti just inside the pot uh, and here's a few from inside tomatoes in pots i can see down on the ground and on that table towards the back looks like a few other plants as well and ferns and things i do like growing in pots we'll come to that in just a moment um this one i think this is also inside this same greenhouse that looks like fennel growing up there fennel does really well in a pot i've got to say we grew it in the pot last a uh, few years ago actually did really really well uh here's jenny showing off inside the greenhouse with the collection of pots uh, next we have nasturtiums and you can't see it very well but it's actually in a what looks like a, a rustic looking pot just goes to show how much you can grow or how big a pot you can do again under here you can see a collection of spinach or beetroot uh, and just growing in underneath there as well um, and another view from this large pot um, and another view i mean this looks like it's got a lot of beans and nasturtium in it so again they all seem to be doing really really well in this pot excuse me chard also in another large pot charge or beet leaf depends on on what you may call it there's quite a few to get through these photos i'm afraid um another pot another collection of plants as well uh, moving on, these were tomatoes all twisted around a climbing frame, also inside these large pots. Join the seed saving movement. I didn't get a good look at that, so I'm going to find out more about that. Now, a tree inside a pot as well. I mean, let's face it, all these show gardens are generally basically large pots. So looking, looking absolutely amazing there. Uh, another large pot inside almost looks like a pergola from this angle. Again, I can see a lot of chard, a lot of green leaf growing in there. Um, looks absolutely amazing, doesn't it? Um, now, this is this last collection of, um, of photos isn't actually crops in pots, but they were from the Marshall's garden, and Jenny just sent them to me because she thought they looked fantastic. Nice straight rows of cabbages there. And here from another angle, the brassicas, all in nice straight rows and looking absolutely stunning. Um, again, just from another angle. What, what, what dedication and how good does it look? Love nice straight lines. They always look absolutely stunning. Uh, the greenhouse as well. Again, beans and things around that. We'll move on. And again, these nice straight lines of chard and various other plants. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Uh, again, leeks, chard, beetroot, kohlrabi, etc., etc. Quite a good collection of crops going on there. So there we go. That was a few of the crops in pots from Chelsea. Uh, as Jenny says, they looked absolutely stunning. And I saw her uh, come up with a comment. The nasturtium also had squash and beans in the pots in their Chelsea garden. So it just goes to show you that you can mix things up and share what you have growing in a pot. I'm just gonna close the shed door quickly, uh, just while Roxy's gone now. There we go. I need closing there because it makes it a little bit quieter. My neighbors are just outside there enjoying their sun and their, their patio. Now, Rebecca says, I love the balcony gardens at Chelsea. They really showed how much you can get into a small garden. This is what we're looking for. Um, Stuart says, I grow lots in pots, tomatoes, chilies, strawberries, raspberries, blackcurrants, potatoes, and I've also sown onions in pots this year. The sweet corn will be on for the charity table. At school, we are growing in a shopping trolley and baskets as part of the school challenge. So this is this is what we we want to get into tonight we want to try and find some different th ways or things that we can grow crops in pots now as you know i'm trying to replicate other gardens in my home plot at the moment trying to help people with the cost of living crisis i know i've just gone and bought a veggie pod which 
is fantastic. And, uh, you know, as a container garden, a raised container garden, they are a brilliant piece of kit. Anybody that's had a veggie pod will tell you so. And effectively, they are a pot. But they are a self-contained environment. They're brilliant, brilliant pieces of kit. But they are expensive. I'll, I'll grant that. So moving away from that, may not be able to put a veggie pod. I've got one outside my back garden. I've got a medium one in the um, on the patio garden at the moment. But other than that, they could go almost anywhere. But not everybody has that. So we're looking at other pots. I have got tomatoes in pots. I have got chilies in pots, peppers in pots, aubergines in pots, salad leaves in pots. Um, I can, I've got beans in pots. So I'm going for dwarf beans as a bit of an experiment. Obviously, I've got fruit trees and bushes in pots. Um, I, I'm of the belief that you can pretty much fit any vegetable, any crops into pots, as long as you get good soil, good compost. And I always say it starts with the compost, buy the best quality compost you can afford. As you know, we're, we're running experiments with different types of compost on the allotment, which is quite interesting, the results so far. Um, but the best you can afford, I also like to mix in some biochar which is a bit like charcoal because that helps hold on to some of the moisture as well as some of the nutrients to feed into that soil later on throughout the year and just help things hold on to it and make a better life for our pots. So that's what I like to start to do. I just want to say, if you want to sap, if you want to call in, the phone line is open. And I also want to say, if you want to zap in, I forgot to share this last week, the link is going up in their comments. Um, so yeah, Stuart's comment there about what he grows in pots, it is endless on what you can grow in pots, but the bigger the pot, the better I find. The small pots dry out quicker. Uh, Idaho, I weeded one raised bed, removed rocks from that bed and added some compost. I laid wire fencing over the top of that bed to keep the cats out and now the bed, bed is ready for transplants. We have our first cooler. Hello, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? Evening, Richard. It's Nicola in Cornwall. Hello, Nicola. How are you today? Oh, I've had a bit of a lazy day. I've not felt so well, but hey, it's one of those things. There's always tomorrow. Um, talking of pots, the majority of what I grow, mm -hmm. unless it's in a raised bed, has got to be in containers. Yes, because you've got arsenic on your land, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. So, um. There are parts of Cornwall that don't have arsenic, and I just had 80, 80 ton of soil delivered this week. Wow. Wow. Um, which has come from a farmer's field where they're building, I think it's a few hundred houses. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not been sieved or anything. So the majority of that is going on the farmland, but some of it will go in containers. But I did put a tiny little post up on um the group earlier in the week because an area that i can't mow or i don't like to mow because i'm a bit afraid of heights even if it's a few inches off the floor mm -hmm. um i put wood um weed suppressant pa uh, fabric down i did do cardboard last year but the weeds have come through the wood chip as well yeah. so i'm afraid i've gone back to the plastic alternative i don't like it but i can't get the mower up there so i've put wood chip down and I managed to get a load of those uh oblong planters which I showed a few weeks ago I managed to get 20 for 20 quid yeah. and they're not you know they're second hand they're they're not the best quality um but all along that ha ha wall I shall be putting vegetables so they're about eight inches deep so it's had chicken and duck bedding at the bottom or horse uh, stable manure yeah. and then um on top of it I put my expensive but cheap compost on top as a growing medium and i'm putting things that i'm not i'm not uh harvesting you know every day so things like spring onions and beetroot um because it's a narrow strip and it's it's not as easy to get as my main veg area i just mm -hmm. want things that i don't have to tend every day so so you're using these pots as a way to grow more food in an area that you may not be able to access easily yeah and i can't use the soil so the other thing that one i bought down i bought them down from brighton believe it or not i bought a load of those metal um water tanks 
So I must have about 10 of those. And some of them are, I don't know, four foot by six foot. Some of the really big ones. Yeah, like cattle um, troughs. So I've, I've got, I've got the, the, the metal tanks that used to be up in the uh, lofts for storing cold water. Right, yeah, water tank. But, yeah. but I've got some industrial size ones. Um, and the other thing is like the builder's plastic troughs I've got, but I've, I've used all sorts of things like the um, 200 gallon, um, is it gallon? No, 200 litre plastic tubs that you see on Facebook a lot of the time. Um, I've cut those in half to make big round planters, or you can do them lengthways and then just put a couple of bits of wood either side. So I've got quite a lot of those because obviously until I get my rear meadow terraced i've got to improvise with stuff yeah. that i can then possibly move on i like you fruit uh bushes and trees in many a pot yeah you know yeah. from the 30 liters upwards yeah yeah but I, what i like hearing about is that you're not just using the standard garden pots that we might buy from garden center you've been a bit clever and imaginative and see it's, what you it's can called use. cost, Richard. It's called <laughs> cost. you know you go to some of these garden center pots and you think Oh, that's lovely, and it's hundred pounds. Yes, yeah. Well, I can I can buy in the day about four of those galvanised water containers. And occasionally, I do still see them at thirty and forty quid, and I'm there on Facebook saying, "Please, can I have? Please, can I have?" Yeah. And sometimes I'm lucky, and sometimes I'm not. But yeah, I, I'm I'm always looking at things and saying, thinking, "What can I use that for?" That's a great. That's something i didn't even think of of what we can use as pots funny enough so that, that's that's a great conversation right there you've started off there in my brain yeah you know i like things that are long wearing so you know i have had terracotta pots in the past and i have still got a few but they don't seem to last as well as mm. a nice bit of solid metal or unfortunately you know a thick bit of plastic you know i'm, I'm not a lover of plastic but if it's a byproduct of something else, then at least it's being recycled. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that um, makes a lot of sense. And I've got the veg trugs and the um, veggie pod, um, and I actually put a reservoir in the bottom of my re veggie trug because I expect everybody knows it's a wooden slatted thing, hmm. um, and they don't actually have a reservoir. But I built one in, oh, yeah. and I used. Um, I use quite a lot of the drainage pipe that you can get for land drainage of different widths. Yeah. So a lot of my tubs, I put a water reservoir in the bottom. That's And a then good put the idea. hole out. So, so say you've got one of those drums that you've cut in half as a planter. Yeah. Um, I'll use, it's either an 80 or a, um, um, a hundred mil um, drainage pipe, either coiled or in length depending on what the shape of the container is so if it's a round one I coil it round mm -hmm. I then put weed suppressant fabric on top and do cut it extra so it goes slightly up the side but also you can push it down in between the gaps where the, the it hasn't coiled really tight and then either put a flower pot in that or just put some compost directly into it which acts as a wicking system and then the bottom layer I put fairly good quality um uh, compost in there as wicking you know the coir or something like that and then whatever growing medium I'm going to go on top and quite often a bit of perlite wow. in with it that's some um, good ideas there. and they they make some really good growing containers and then you drill you know two or three holes in the side and make sure the weed suppressant is up against it so the holes doesn't get blocked that's some good ideas there, right there yeah I think I will be using some of those tips as well, funnily enough. But the other thing I've recently done, which um, I'm going to do as a project, is I got some two litre ice cream containers from an ice cream shop in Newquay. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were Ben and Jerry's, but hey, I'm not going to promote a particular ice cream. Um, and what I'm going to do is the bottom container, I'm going to put a slot in the lid mm -hmm. and put uh, a wicking fabric into it so the bottom will be my reservoir and the one that sits on top of the lid will be my growing and i thought i could get two strawberry plants in each of those and they would have a constant water supply what a great idea what a great idea i've never thought of doing anything like that 
Um, I've made wicking beds before, just using a, a pot, a, well, a plastic container, and I've drilled a hole instead of on the bottom, about an inch from the, the on the side, an inch up. But the, the the ice cream tub idea, that's genius. Well, that only came to me last week. I was, I've, I've been cutting them up mm. to make like one within the other, and I thought, oh, you stupid mare, why don't you just put the lid on and put some. Uh, wicking fabric down through you know you could even use an old piece of i don't know cotton tea towel if you wanted to i'm sure yeah. that would work but yeah. obviously i think the wicking mats have got the capillary action more but i just thought you know it's a way of growing stuff but everything around i, I know i keep threatening to do more videos but i haven't yeah. um everything around my house my, my builder calls me the pot lady <laughs> <laughs> yeah well there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've I've done a lot of container gardening, especially in my old house, where uh, the idea I grew in, in containers so I could move them out of the way. Let's say we have people around, I, then very little light. I can move them out of the way so we could have guests around and then move them back when we weren't using the garden. Yeah, well, I I um I follow quite a few YouTube ch channels, and there's um I know him as Shed Wars, but I can't remember his um. I don't know if that is his channel name. And he did pots and he used guttering mm -hmm. underneath with a wicking system, with yeah. which linked up to a 200 litre uh, water tank. And I thought that was quite clever. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think with pots, I do like the ones with two handles because they're easier to move her around. But then some of the bigger ones, um, like those wooden containers with trellises that... Um, I put on the channel, I think, two or three weeks ago that I were, was restaining. I'm actually going to put wheels on the bottom of them. And I'm also looking to do it so that the galvanised tanks are on a wooden base wheel so that I can move them around. Because once they're full, there's no no way on earth, even the small ones, um, I'll be lifting them. So I just wanted a way of having a more mobile garden. Yeah, well, as you were saying that, I wrote down sack trolley because that's what I use to move some of my larger pots. Yeah, but these big galvanised tanks that are like three foot high and three foot wide and four foot long. Um, I remember when I was trying to empty them out from because they were they were full in Brighton, so mm. <laughs> I'd done yeah. it. I'd done it. <laughs> had to bring them down here. You know, it's one of those things, isn't it? Oh, I love these pots. I'm not leaving them. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean there. Well, that's great. I think you have kicked off the conversation quite nicely there. Thank you. And uh, I love you and leave you. And um, I look forward to my Sunday evenings with you all. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much for the call. Cheers, Richard. Cheers, bye Nicola. Bye. Bye. There we go. Our first caller with lots and lots of good ideas of things we could use as pots there, as well as being a little bit different. So, um. Oh, let's have a quick look at what the comments are saying. So I might have to miss a few. Apologies for that. So Chili Case is John. Good evening to you. Sorry a bit late. Home from the allotment with rhubarb to make cordial. I've just shared a cordial, a rhubarb cordial recipe. Somebody was asking about that in the group earlier. Uh, uh, Idaho says a veggie pot is on my wish, wish list. My veggie pot is used to seeing it in bed. I was only kidding. Harvested radishes to and sown the pickling onions from the supporters club. Fantastic. Stuart Jackson also another veggie pod user full of salad and herbs. I forgot about that. I'm also growing my climbing French beans in pots this year. Uh, Rebecca says, I grow lots in pots. It has good and bad sides. And I think that's true. It does have good and bad sides. And there we go. We have another cooler. Hello, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? The Oracle. Hello, Oracle. How are you today? Oh, dear. I'm just phoned in here about your crops and pots. Yeah. What, what's see, your thoughts? Well, my thoughts, well, personally, all I really grow in, the, in it is peppers. Yeah. Tomatoes, cucumber. I tried an aubergine, but, you know, they still grow anything else. You try to, you know, you're, you're probably... Grow on you know, but you only grow one on you know, the pot, aren't you? Sorry, say that again. You broke up a bit there. I said the likes of an onion, you only grow one onion in a pot. You know, you're not really getting much space to grow in pots, like are you? 
Yes, I mean, I know that I was, I was um, talking to, I saw a, a comment from a competition onion grower the other day, and he had got 10 litre pots, so he was growing a single onion in, but obviously that's for competition. But I, even though I thought that's a lot of compost and a lot of pot for one onion. Yeah. Hmm. But I just say, really, I think you can only really grow things that came up if you want coming from. Can they see your cucumbers, your tomatoes, your your peppers, and aubergines? You know anything else? It's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of compost and tame for just like a lattice. You wouldn't grow a lattice in a pot, would you? Mm. I mean, unless you think a bit like Nicola, where she's using some rectangular, big rectangular pots, and they're yeah, effectively yeah. becoming like a raised bed. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I know what you're saying. But I think we generally do associate pot growing with things that grow up, the bigger tomatoes and things. But I think if we can think outside the box, we might be able to do more. Yeah, I thought just, just, just curiosity to see what the rest thinks. I just think it's uh, personally, on my, my, my experience, I think, I think it's a bit of time unless you're going from the grows up. And mm -hmm. as you say, a competition grower, but for the likes of ourselves, you know, how, how much can you grow in a pot? Yeah, you sort of want the firm ground, but you need the cool stuff on it. Unless your pot's a big, massive pot, but what's a standard pot that you would grow in, really? Like, um, so was that the what standard size pot do I grow in? No, I what's that? I'm saying, you know, you don't really, you wouldn't really go out there to buy specific massive so, pots, like, would you? Sorry, this line's really bad tonight. I'm really struggling with to hear you. I'm saying you wouldn't go out of your way to grow in. Grow big massive pots, would you? Um, as I said, when I had a small garden, I did have big pots because I could move them out the way and pot them where the sun wasn't shining when we were entertaining guests. So there's aspects to it that I think people may use a big pot for, but not in everyday case. And if you've got the opportunity, like ourselves with our allotments, where we can go grow in the ground, everything does grow better in the ground. There's no two yeah. dates about that. Um, I think, again, it's the horses for courses. Oh, I've heard it, dude. That's here. That is your shoes all about. See yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Someone else could phone in and turn around and tell you they've had a success with someone else in a pot and they've had a good crop out of it, you know? That's from my experience. I'm only saying I've only ever had good success out of tomatoes, yeah. cucumber, your, your aubergines, your peppers, you know. Yeah. As I say, I'll be interested to see what the rest say. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I think a lot of it with pots, why we don't get as much success, is due to the amount of water because pots yeah. dry out quicker. Yeah, it just dries out no time. I know they're saying about the wetting system, but even yeah. that, that, that. It's still hard to you got or some compost there to try and work up into to to keep it moist, isn't it? Like Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Yeah, they, they, they didn't listen to me about your your pumpkin anyway. It died with stem wrap. Sorry, you broke up again there. Your pumpkin it died of stem wrap. You didn't listen to how I told you to grow it. You need to put the drain pipe right down. Oh no, I did that, but we had rain during the week and that's what killed it off. Oh. Yeah. So that means yeah, and it's a public umbrella. Like your right. yourself would have covered that over. <laughs> yeah, no, it was um, um, rain that killed the uh, pumpkin off, I'm afraid. Uh, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what everyone else says here. But, but if they are, ask them what size of pot they're growing in. Yeah, what size pot are you growing in? We'll ask that. What, what just for in. curiosity. That's brilliant, Richard. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, Oracle. No worries. Thank you, and God bless, son. God you, bless. You too, you too, buddy. Yeah. All the best. Bye, bye. Bye. There we go. That was Oracle from Northern Ireland. I was going through the comments just there. Um, now, Rebecca has raised a good point. It can be expensive buying the compost and time-consuming watering all the time. But then it is it great if you have a small garden or mobility issues. Absolutely right. Now, I try to reuse the compost from pots, from the old pots. So I try and add a bit of uh, nutrients to the old compost um, in the form of fertilizers and mix in some fresh compost to try and reuse it. Not always that easy, I know, but and watering does take a lot longer. And I'm definitely finding that in the patio garden where it's because it's a patio, it holds on to water or heat a lot longer. 
so it dries out a lot faster. That's where I find the bigger the pot, the more chance you have with it. Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, compost can be expensive. Compost is expensive regardless, I find. And I can make my own compost, but I cannot guarantee it's going to be seed free. Um, uh, Turbo Stream says they were spare plant. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jenny Hullett says I reuse old compost. I add conditioner or rotted manure in to feed the compost. I don't buy too much compost each year, and it's like this year. I need it as I've expended expanded the veg patch a similar like i said that's similar to what i say but there's one person here who uh, i'm sure is no stranger to trying to save money on compost that is mr stuart jackson stuart buddy hello, hello rich you all right good thanks yourself yeah i'm fine mate yeah i'm yeah compost is my biggest expense like most of us biggest expense mm -hmm. but I'm growing in pots where I can and because my, my veg patch isn't very big. So my patio is covered in, um, the only way I can describe them is Ikea trays. So yeah. like you've got a stuck, you've got a drawer system. So yeah. they've chucked a load out at school. So I add them and then I put the pot in there. So it's like a wicking system. Yeah, with you. So with you. like yeah. a gravel tray. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like going back to the onions, I grew, I'm growing spring onions in pots. So they're around the outside of the pot. And then in the middle of the pot are carrots. Killing two birds with one stone. Because if you've got onions next to your carrots, so say, you won't get carrot fly. Yeah, that is, that is actually a very good point and a very good way of using these pots. Um, I like that. That's a very great they're, point. They're, only, they're only a foot a foot across 12 inches across or it might be that like they're flower buckets mm -hmm. um so if i because the carrots i've sown this week are the little ball ones yeah you know um so if i'm growing longer carrots i will then use a deeper bucket um oh. but but again like you said when you're in your other house you can move them around so if you're finding they're getting too much sun in one place or not enough sun, you can move it around. Yeah. Uh, but at school, it's completely different. You know, I, the bigger pot, I use a bigger pot um, yeah. because I don't want the kids to move them around. <laughs> I, you know, if you, if, if the pot's small, they will move them around and then they, then the plants get damaged. So it, I will use tree pots. Um, oh, yeah. Or right, little raised beds, little, um, so I don't want to move really. Um, but then one of my colleagues came up with, with this challenge with the shopping trolley. That is hard to try to keep that watered. <laughs> I will say that. I can imagine actually. Yeah. Cause it's nothing to re even begin to hold the water in place. No, we've lined it with Hessian and then yeah. I've told a couple of them to put some sponges in the bottom or something in the bottom that can, um, hold the water a bit we've like the one I did with one class I put about four inches of bark in the bottom so then hopefully the bark will hold the water a bit more yeah, yeah. Um, but my the baskets I filled with soil rather than compost because soil holds the water better than compost um, that makes sense. That makes but it's amazing it, it's amazing how hot heavy a shopping basket is full of soil <laughs> yeah yeah i can imagine actually because they hold yeah. quite a bit yeah it was quite quite surprising how heavy they are <laughs> i didn't yeah. i hadn't anticipated that um but i will put a picture up on the on the group because the shopping trot the baskets have been planted up so i will put one up on the group so everybody can see but it's just the watering issue. I agree with every, everything that's been said about if you've got it in pots, you've got to keep it watered. But if you keep your eye on Facebook Marketplace, people are always throwing things away that yeah. are useful in the garden. Um, we grew potatoes in a drum kit last year. A drum kit? Yeah. We, school had a new good drum kit and the, the old it was damaged, so that's why it was replaced. So I just cut the top off, made a, put a couple of holes in the bottom, and planted potatoes in them. 
Fantastic. But it, to me, it was a waste because she said, oh, chuck them in the bin. Well, no, <laughs> no, I use them. And because it's in a drum kit, the kids are more enthused. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's, yeah, and it, it was attractive. It was better than looking at, like, I do get a bit, oh, it's a black bucket or it's whatever, you know. So if it's somewhat a little bit different, it's it's a talking point. If you got you get people, like, other classes come round and see what we've done, so then they were looking for unusual things to plant in. Ah, so there's okay. all, it's like, we've all had a water butt split on us, haven't we? Just cut it in yeah. half and plant it up, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, it's just not trying to chuck anything away. And because I grow so much, you know, I know it's not all edibles, but so much, that's all I can do. I can't, I haven't got the room I have got a nursery bed, but I haven't got the room to sow everything outside. So it's everything has to start off in pots and or paper pots, then pots, then gets into a bigger pot. Um, so just don't chuck anything away. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I keep I keep going to my customers, and I'm looking for the big tins that uh, they uh, they keep tomato sauce in. Yeah, to deliver it because I want to grow something in that, but I cannot get hold of them for love of money because they're always in such high demand. Yeah, it's and then also, can you remember? I don't know if you're old enough to remember, but the ice cream from the ice cream man used to be in a tin. No, you can't remember that, can you? No, no, but no. If the older no. members of the audience will remember that that the ice cream man used to give them away when they were empty. Right. And I can remember my dad growing carrots in them. They were quite deep. They were sort of 18 inches deep. And he would grow carrots in them. Wow. So you could, there's loads of things you can, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just we're so wasteful as a society. Hmm. If it's plastic, yeah. it's nine times out of ten is non-recyclable. So you then use it again and again. And if, yeah. if I think if we're using it in the garden, even if we only get five years out of it, we've got this five years before it's had to go into landfill, or yeah. they might in five years' time they might find how to recycle it. Yeah. So you know, and but I use mushroom trays as well for lettuce and and salad. Just line the mushroom tray with a bit of hessian or a bit of cardboard. So put the compost in. Sow your seeds. So that's that's another good one. Well, but, well, there you go. I never knew. Never I don't know if I can turn this rain, but that's my. I don't know if you can see for the conservatory. Yeah, that is all pots. Fantastic. <laughs> so, Fantastic. yeah, I'm not always popular. <laughs> with, you know, because you can't get on the patio. Yeah, um, no, I have that trouble as well. Funny enough. But it will all get end up down the bottom of the garden eventually when I get the garden sorted. So the patio will come back. Yeah. So but I've got to get it manageable. You know, it's got to be to get rain and water everything. You've got to have it manageable. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, it seems like a good point actually. It's like I was saving for a bit later on, but the, the watering thing is popping up quite often. I yeah. installed in my greenhouse to water my pots that I have in the greenhouse, particularly over winter, solar-powered self-watering systems. So every three hours mm. of sunlight, it just drip-feeds water into the pots. That's so, a good idea. Yeah, I mean, they're quite expensive. I got them when they were discounted, of course. But that has saved me a lot of time. In this particular one, which is a small one, does up to six. I've got another one that does up to 12 pots yeah i think i've got one just a, a gravity fed one but not solar panel um yeah. you just fill the bag up hang the bag up in the greenhouse and then i think that's got six on it as well yeah. that'd be ideal for a holiday or a yeah. few days away um but that is the only trouble when i go away i have to get somebody to water the garden so, yeah, or the pots. Anyway, I'll let that. I'll let you answer that, and I'll go. Yep. Oh, they've gone now, so I don't oh. know it yeah. So it, that is the only drawback for me is I need a neighbour to water everything. Yeah. So 
Um, but the wicking, I do, I, I like the ice cream container. So if you could do it with an ice cream container, you can do it with a lot of things. Yeah. So bucket. if I make sure everything, yeah, everything is flower bucket, even, even big sources for your trays. You can, the only trouble with sources is they're not very deep, but you don't yeah. want it stood in, some plants don't want to be stood in water anyway, do they? So, um, I will. I'm going to give, I'm going to give that ice cream one a, a go, I think. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I will go because then hopefully that phone will ring back. Well, we never know, but I've got a few videos to get through as well. And oh, fab! We're nearly an hour in as well, so we'll oh, brilliant! Through. All right then, Rich. Thank you very much, Stuart. That's all right. Speak to you soon. See you soon. Cheers, buddy. See you. Bye. Bye. So there we go, Stuart Jackson, also another keen grower in pots. Now, I'm going to bring up the first video. This came in from Jenny. I've split them into two to make it a bit more uh, uh, easy to digest uh, in just a moment. But first of all, I want to remind everybody, if you are enjoying this and you're learning something from this show or you're being inspired, give us a thumbs up. Give us a... Uh, a like don't forget to click the bell notification or get notified whenever we go live and subscribe or follow whichever platform you're watching on just hit like and everything else please uh, that would be fantastic so let's go to this first video that come in from as i said it was from jenny hi everyone here's some things i grow in containers uh, here is a pink blueberry and behind a strawberry tower which works really well. I really recommend these. They're about £1.50 each and you can go as high as you like. Um, next we have my alpine strawberries sitting in my apple tree pot. It's very happy and full. Of delicious apples uh, scattered around in lots of little pots of strawberries and bits uh, I don't normally grow in beds um, but my friend was giving these away for free and as we're trying to be much more self-sufficient I thought we'll give it a go um, we are hoping to move house so if that happens these will be crops that we can you know cope without runner beans and things that are Cheap and cheerful, but they will also be growing in pots as well. So I don't keep one crop in one place. I kind of scatter the same crop all over. Um, excuse the black plastic. We're waiting for the bark chips to arrive. Uh, there's a blackberry. Uh, there's my rather large blueberry. And then here, come back. Is my growing arch. Uh, at the front here we have some Sutton Dwarf broad beans which are doing great just producing their first pods and then down each side of the arch uh, there are sunflowers, a variety of squashes, spring onions, um, radishes, nasturtiums, melons, uh, some uh, different rubber beans, um, French beans, dwarf French beans, uh, beetroots, all sorts in there. Uh, and that will change over the season. So as things grow, um, the small crops will be finished. And when things finish, I can plonk in something else. So um, supports will go across. Each runner, you can see some the wooden beans down there. My dad's going to come next week. So that will all be completely um, wooden supports and twine for everything to grow up and over. And in the middle is one of my water butts because these guys drink a lot. Excuse any background noise. Um, here we have a large bed container um, this is really good actually they are from primrose.com about 12 pounds um, so in there is going to go sweet corn uh, and in front of the sweet corn will go some more courgettes that are waiting for the compost to arrive 
with the bark chips. Uh, I will grow in here um, pumpkins and squashes that I want to come with us. So there'll be one per pot. And then in the pot, when the compost is in with a couple of canes, goes these wire structures. And then the, the plants are threaded through as they grow. Uh, it's enough to support the weight. Obviously, it has to be small pumpkins. Uh, Tom Montino's, um, White Buffy, that kind of thing, uh, do great in this. It's worked really well for me. Um, so there's three or four canes in the middle, um, the other side of the wire, just to keep it in place. Um, and then you just thread it through, and it, it works really well. Um, that down for falls over. Just here, in this messy bit, um, I'm having some hay, no, straw bales delivered, hopefully today. And uh, there'll be two at the back, um, and one down the side here. And in the middle, I can then raise it the compost level. In the middle, I am growing sweet potatoes. And then I'm using the straw bales as a container. And there'll be things like um, tomatoes and peppers and aubergines. Um, and then the sweet potatoes will have canes up in the middle for the vines to go up so they don't contain everything. But the tomatoes that are going in here are the wild variety, so they scramble um, and, and sort themselves out. So that should work quite well. And then at the end, um, there's a little pot um, of a griller's mix squash with some yin-yang dwarf beans and some cosmos. Okay, over here, uh, you've probably guessed by now, I let nettles grow like nuts. Um, one, we eat them. And two, the aphids adore them and leave the vegetables alone. Um, and three, obviously you get the caterpillars um, from the butterflies, which is beautiful. And slugs hate them. So here I grow um, in the pots, there'll be some tomatoes and aubergines. But mainly on the ladders uh, and in these pots and this large felt container would be my salad crops so as they will be surrounded by nettles it really helps reduce the the slug problem and um, I use nettles I make a really nice Viking stew which is very nice um, so yeah for this um, they serve multiple purposes here is another container um, that will be for squashes. This is for a larger pumpkin, so maybe crown prince uh, or pink banana. Something that needs a bit more, has a bit more weight to it. So there's a, a lower pot with lower wire. Uh, and then in the middle, I will put some supporting canes again. Uh, I will only let this, this produce maybe two fruits, but there'll be two decent sized ones. Um, and uh, if, if it's looking very vigorous, I sometimes will let it put the odd stem down onto the black membrane. Um, but then this is so we can move house with it. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And then these pots here that stand on chairs, these are where I grow my carrots. Um, because they are so high, as you see. Um, the cat root fly has never been a problem for me. Uh, and again, all the nettles behind serve as a bit of a, a helpful barrier to those pesky problems. There we go. That is part one. We've got part two coming up a little bit later on of uh, Jenny's garden tour. As you can see, there's a lot of pots that are things being grown in pots there. I particularly like the ladder as a, a way of trying to make more and more room for growing things in pots. Uh, so Stuart says, I think I'm going to go going to buy or pick up for free some more fruit buckets. They're ideal for potatoes or root vegetables. Yeah, I do grow, I'm certainly growing a lot of potatoes in buckets this year. I used to always grow my potatoes in buckets, funnily enough. But I decided to grow them in the ground down on the allotment lately because they do do better. They need less work and I can fit more in. But in various areas in my garden, I am moving on to buckets there. Um, Stuart says, love the red plastic planter. May look at, get, may look at getting a couple of them. 
Uh, Turbo Stream says, amazing collection of pots there. Indeed, there was a lot. So Bally Sinian says, one pot I found to be very good for my peppers, etc., is the air pots. Grows a great root system and they come in various sizes. I've yet to try some air pots, to be honest. I've seen them and I've heard a lot of good things. So my understanding of the air pots is they're almost like a foam material that make a pat. A pot. I've not. I've not actually touched any, so I don't know. But they make like a, a, a foam material, so basically any roots that grow out are air prunes and therefore don't expand out of there. But I do hear a lot of good things, so I do want to find out about these and test these out. Uh, I am actually funny enough on this note. Peppers. I'm growing peppers and chilies in hanging baskets this year because I think they're going to perform quite well there. Now, Jenny says a Coke bottle with small holes buried in the pot. Fill the bottle and it slowly waters. I do this with a lot of pots and it keeps the surface dry as well. I remember years ago when I had the small garden and we did grow a lot of things in pots. A garden centre used to sell these things that you screw onto a pot, you fill or in, onto a bottle, sorry, and you stick in the ground and then you fill water into the bottle and it slowly trickles into the pot. They actually worked okay, but I did have to stuff some sort of cotton wool into it just to stop it from running out quite fast. A small hole in a cake bottle, pretty much the same thing. Might even work, well, it's cheaper, isn't it? <laughs> Going to save a few quid there. Toby Stream says, I'm growing a few carrots in a flower bucket, about the only thing that the slugs leave alone. Um, oh, Ernie is joined. Good evening to you. She says, have you had a good weekend gardening? We did. Great weather, perhaps. Yes, it's been a really good weekend for gardening, I've got to say. Uh, Jenny also says, mixing clear that holds water well. well. I'm firstly, I've moved on to biochar, which is a bit like, a, well, it is a charcoal. And I mix it in with my, my potting mix. And it does very much the same sort of thing as, um, well, anything that holds onto water, it holds onto water, it holds onto nutrients. People are using it in beds because it is meant to be really, really good. Yeah, as a grow medium and i'm finding in pots it does work quite nicely it is expensive if i'm honest to buy biochar but if you can get the good source the source i get it from they uh, they burn up ash trees that have been cut down and turn that into charcoal and mix that in does a fantastic job really good job uh koya is just uh, koya has Koi is good, but there's a lot of people who complain about how far it comes. It is a waste product from coconut husks, if I remember correctly. Uh, and I know a lot of people complain about the, the distance it travels. It's way it up, way it up, isn't it? There's always good and bad with anything we use. Uh, Alison says, fabulous garden there. Love your ideas for pots. And Stuart says, the bottle watering tops are about Five pound on that online shop. Must be eBay, I think he's talking about there. Um, yeah, I haven't seen them for a while. I, I know a garden centre used to sell them, and I've still got a few somewhere till Roxy gets hold of them and chews them up. Uh, let me just go back because I know I missed quite a few of the um, comments. Uh, there was there was a comment. Um, Beatrice, I don't cut rhubarb. A gentle tug at the base does the job. Uh, oh, Ian Beddoes was asking, what's best for cutting rhubarb, cutters or a sharp knife? So I do, like Beatrice says, I just um, pull it out from the plant and then I get a sharp knife, cut the leaf off, cut the little white base off, and then I use that. I've been eating a lot of rhubarb again this year. We had, uh, just before I came on live, rhubarb full. Delicious, delicious. Um, let's see. Nicholas says, slugs have eaten all my basil from seeds and quite a few of my sunflowers. Wow. Well, yeah, there's, I think, yeah. Caught up. There's probably other comments I've missed. Apologies for that. But um, there's a lot to, to go through tonight. Um, 
So, yes, I do grow a lot of things in pots. I mentioned my veggie pod earlier. I've mentioned it quite a bit, and you'll hear more about that on the podcast tomorrow. And that is probably my favourite piece of gear, but they are quite pricey. Nicola was mentioning about the steel containers that we uh, we can water tanks uh, for growing plants in, and that got me thinking about uh, my blueberry bushes. Now, all my blueberry bushes I grow in pots because blueberries need ericaceous soil. It's far easier to control that in a pot, which is an advantage to growing them in a pot. Um, so, ericaceous co compost blueberry in works a treat and uh, uh, blueberries like agricultural soil for the ph um, and being acidic which is why we don't use uh tap mains water to water them it's all rainwater. Uh, but again as i say this comes down to controlling that environment by using and growing them in pots and the, the metal container i was talking about we've got a triangular a corner piece metal watering trough from a farm that we use for that and i uh i grow that that blueberry bush in there quite nicely in, a, in a, the corner i've mulched this is something i've got on my list as well i mulch all my pots so actually i've got a bag of it down here of this mulch that i bought in let me just uh get rid of this so this is the mulch that I tend to use. We use grass clippings as well, particularly on the allotment, but at home when you want it to look nicer. This is like a compressed straw. Uh, I forget the company I got it from, uh, but you put that on the top, you add water, and this all swells up, and it creates a beautiful mulch over the surface of the soil, which just works really well at stopping the water from evaporating quicker from the surface of the soil uh, and it also goes a long way in suppressing weeds as well it's fantastic stuff again it's not cheap to buy but i highly recommend if you get get some of that do do it if you want to save money straw i find not so good for suppressing weeds or grass clippings which i use a lot of as no doubt many of you know um, when I'm on the allotment, I'm always talking about mulch, mulch, mulch. If I can mulch it, I'll mulch it, basically. Uh, shall we go back to, um, no, sorry, uh, the second part of Jenny's garden? Yeah, let's do that. I found these bags for Nutleys. Um, I've hung them over the concrete fence posts. Uh, at the top is a tomato. Uh, all this, I'm, I'm doing this on every fence post down. You can see a couple more. Um, they're all cherry varieties, not too heavy. And at the bottom, there's some rather leggy nasturtiums that needed potting out a while ago. Um, and I'm going to grow these horizontally. And I'll show you how in a second. So I'm standing right under a concrete washing line post that we no longer use. As you can see, my washing line's just there. Um, underneath here we have yet to planted out pumpkins and squashes but these are the um, the large ones so there's pink banana crown prince there's a marrow and I think that was a honey boat these are going to scramble all over the black membrane uh, and they will cover it uh, and in there I shall also grow some um, climbing nasturtiums that will just left to grow across the floor uh, this worked brilliantly last summer uh, and you just couldn't see the black at all but the black also provides heat so that the fruits ripen really nicely um, no slug damage because the slugs hate the warmth it was a bit of a win-win situation it worked really well uh, but um, from the washing line post I'm stood in front of and the other one washing line post is just where the blue ladders are we're going to thread a wire a really strong wire and then all these tomatoes in a line here um, will be growing using the cord method, string method, which will be attached to the wire. And then from every post going across to the wire, we'll grow a tomato horizontally. So in theory, I'm making like a wire structure that's gonna grow tomatoes up 
and a long. Um, and in the um, hanging basket there will be cucumelons and other little bits. So it should be quite pretty and should work well <laughs> in theory. Uh, the nutless hanging pots I planted up four days ago and uh, really watered them well and they are still wet inside. Um, so I'm quite impressed that they shouldn't be watering too often. But I, I have tried it and I can just um, drop the top of the hose pipe inside and then uh, and water um, carefully. I'm also hoping the tomatoes growing horizontally should be fairly blight proof because they will have no soil contact at all. And these guys will also have some of the straw from the bales as a mulch um, with um, tomato halos uh, again so to keep the soil away from them. Uh, in addition to the arch pots there are there will be various pots just scattered around randomly wherever I can fit them in really uh, and in these there will be um, cauliflower or cabbage, um, a radish crop, um, strawberries, uh, various herbs, you name it, we took it in uh, and we just plonk it as and where there's room. Uh, I need room um, to walk with my sticks or walker so they just kind of fit around really um, and whether there's space and then the potatoes are all grown in bags and again when they're ready the sweet potatoes will grow in in bags um, with canes so the vines grow up uh, to control them because otherwise they're a bit unruly. Here I have taken the shelves out of one of the little greenhouses and we will have a cucumber growing in here. Uh, there will probably be two because um, I like to cram things in. That one's a market more as you can see it's very happy in there uh, and I've got some other ones that aren't quite big enough yet there's a I think it's called a crystal lemon um, and there's a another one something long and um, so some will go on the arch and a couple will go in here and a couple I may let grow along the black membrane okay I think you saw a photo uh, of in here that I set out just to see what fits of my tomatoes had to put it all back temporarily to keep these guys safe. Um, but in here, there will be 10 tomato pots. As you can see them in the corner. And on the end of each row, I'm going to grow a melon. And the melon will grow through the handles of each bucket. So the melons are going to grow all around. And then this one will go around here. Because the handles are really quite, quite strong. Um, so I'm just gonna see if I can thread it through. Bit of an experiment, see if it works, keeps the fruit off. They were nice and toasty and warm. This is working brilliantly. We've not had a slug in here uh, since I put this down. Um, they hate it. So but I was making sure that I water everything directly and not spilling any water, so it's nice and dry. Uh, and then in here, I will hang um, maybe some little carnivorous plants or something, just to help keep the gnats and bits in, in check. Raspberries and currants grow really well in pots. This raspberry is maybe five years old. Uh, in front of it's a, a, um, a white currant that I bought bare roots a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah, growing in raspberries in pots really works very well. They, they don't mind at all. Uh, yet to be finished, but lots of companion planting goes on. Uh, all shapes and colours, all sizes, to attract everything I can. This is my wildlife bed, right next to my veg in pots patch. Uh, in here, it's pretty much left to go. I, I even let the bind weed stay, because the bees love it. Uh, there's two little ponds, and in here is absolutely full of frogs, and newts, uh, the grass snake hangs out, beetles and bugs, all sorts. Oh, I was well engrossed in that video, I forgot when it was going to end. What a great little video! Uh, 
so many plants in pots. What a great, great thing. And I can see there's a lot of people sharing the love there. What a great idea for the cucumber. Mine died. I think it was too quick to plant out. Very sorry. There's still time to sow more cucumber. I'll pop down to a garden centre and buy some. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, Idaho says that's a very interesting idea for planting your tomatoes, Jenny. Uh, Jenny says, thank you. I do love an experiment. Uh, Ian is saying, Miss Veg Grower, I would hang on for cooking tea tonight. Show going really well, so he might be finished late finishing. Good thing is we had our tea before we go live. We try and uh, make sure we can eat before we can go live. And uh, Stuart says, what an amazing garden. Well done. Indeed, what an amazing garden. Followed up by Anna. That was amazing, Jenny. And uh, Jenny says, thank you. Uh, Hargrave guest, Jenny looks great. What was on the floor that the slugs hate? I wondered the same thing, actually. I think it was wood shavings, if I remember correctly. But uh, I'd like it just to be confirmed, if possible, Jenny. I also noticed towards the end, particularly, there was a very large steel bin with some plants in. And that got me thinking about another YouTuber, Steve's Seaside Life. If you haven't seen him, I'm sure most of you have. And uh, he, I believe in front of his house, he has a collection of those steel dustbins that he grows some fruit trees in as a way of, well, basically expanding his growing space, but also making sure that they don't get stolen because they're so heavy to move that somebody's going to really struggle at moving certain things. That's something that I've, I've found with our front garden at the moment because I do have a lot of fruit trees and bushes in pots out our front i am worried that they might get stolen it's something that's always worried my wife as well especially in our old garden we, we've got to try it but if we can make them as heavy as possible to stop them from being sold or stolen and as big as possible then we're going to win 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 uh, allison says loves your ideas jenny indeed there are some great great ideas and thank you so much for sharing them with us I tell you what, let's quickly go through the, oh, uh, let's just, Alison says, I've got an apple tree in half a barrel, no chance of moving it. Just like I was saying, this is what I'm thinking of doing in our front garden, some big containers that can have apple trees and things like that. Uh, Jenny says, it's a stable wood shavings, 100% natural and a huge bale. They are pine, so I stand the pots on trays, I water carefully so everything stays dry on the ground. Stable wood shavings, there you go. That's something to look at, which I go for a lot with the chickens, funnily enough. So maybe that might be something to look at in our various other areas. Ian Benno says, so happy the grandkids have gone on holiday for half term means I get to eat some of the peas. But funny enough, that might come up in this collection here. So here we go. So this is your photos. These are photos that are sent to us via our Facebook page or um, via email, etc., etc. Now, first of all, Turbo Stream, he's got these charred seedlings growing on the window, so which look nice and healthy, I've got to say. Just like the chard that I moved today, although now I've moved them and they're looking a little bit droopy. Uh, he's also got salad leaf growing on a windowsill with some reflective material behind it. Looks great. Looks tasty as well. Uh, carrots. I believe these are carrots anyway. In a pot. I certainly think they are carrots. Um, these flower buckets that we were talking about earlier with Stuart. They are these pots. Uh, Anice, who is in the audience tonight, I've seen her. Uh, she shared these pots on her windowsill. Uh, she'd seen quite a few photos, actually. I had to choose. It was hard to choose the best ones as well. Um, good collection of pots on the windowsill, all looking nice and healthy. Uh, here's a veg truck that uh, I know Nicola mentioned earlier. This is Anis's one, who's also full of lots and lots of healthy-looking vegetables. You can see lettuce, onions, carrots in that. Uh, peppers in a pot on the patio look very, very healthy. Those peppers as well, very healthy. Uh, good, good, nice amount of growth. I believe they're peppers, they might be chilies, but uh, I mean to know peppers and salad leaves in the pot as well. Also, looking very healthy and full of growth. Um, 
tasty. I'm getting looking at it, it makes me hungry. Uh, Kate has shared this photo of her potatoes and she's asking, what can I grow in the rows between these potatoes? A few ideas have came out, nasturtiums being one, spring onions or beetroot. Uh, so good, good collection there. Good ideas that came out from that. And she was also after rhubarb cordial recipes, which I've shared with the one from my website. But any other ideas would be greatly received. Uh, Ian Meadows has shared this photo of the apple fruitlets on his apple tree. Nice to see them. Nice to see them growing and going to get fruit from these trees. Um, Ian Meadows also got his chard that looks to be growing quite well in his bed, in the border, sorry. Uh, and peas in his greenhouse. And I know Ian has trouble with peas that his grandkids eat before he gets hold of them. As I said before I brought this on, he's going to be getting them this weekend with it being half term. And also more peas that have grown in his greenhouse getting ready to be planted out. Look really good there. Really good. Uh, Stephen Tysurst. I haven't seen him in the chat tonight, but he's often here. Uh, he's got his radish looking great. Beautiful photograph there, I've got to say. Looking nice and healthy there. Now, this is also his same bed. Uh, nice straight lines again. What looks like kohlrabi and onions and uh, beans growing along there. Uh, and this is also his bed as well. Beds, I should say. I do love his beds because they are just looking so nice and artistic. A very, very neat person, Stephen is. Uh, Andy Mahoney has shared this photo of his polytunnel, which is full of plants. He made a comment on this that it's like the Mediterranean in there. He's in there. The tomato plants are looking really healthy and big growth, I've got to say. But he's made a comment that he's in there. It's like being in the Mediterranean. A few more photos of that, the polytunnel. And it made me think of Lucy Chamberlain, who uh, him and his, her and her husband often go into their greenhouse to have their dinner because it's just such a nice place to eat and be with the plants. Um, that's it. That is it for the photos for this week. That was quite a few, wasn't it? Uh, but please do keep sharing them. You can send me an email, richard at the uk, for send some photos. Post your photos in our Facebook group, which you can find on Facebook. Um, if you've got a video as well, go to wetransfer.com and send them to richard at the uk. Um, uh, Amanda, hello, lovely to see you. And your polytunnel is amazing. Um, it is amazing polytunnel from that, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. Uh, Idaho, polytunnel or greenhouse has been on my wish list for half a century, lol. I might be getting my third greenhouse next weekend, believe it or not. not we might be building it but not having us glass for it, but three, one greenhouse at home and two on the allotment. A uh, great photo of Radish, Stephen. He's very artistic with his photos, I've got to say. Uh, and Idaho says, I love to see the veg pictures. Yeah, I love seeing lots of them. Uh, and it's did confirm that they were peppers. I thought they were. Uh, again, they look really healthy. Even Bally Sillian says, way ahead of mine. I thought they were way ahead of mine as well. Um Stuart Jackson says, rhubarb and custard scones for tea tonight. Yum, yum. They sound nice. Can you sh send me the recipe, Stuart, please? That sounds delicious. Uh, uh, Anna says, great photos to everyone indeed. Thank you so much for your photos. And Jenny says, are you on Instagram? I share loads on there. I could tag you on the process. I am on Instagram. I don't go on there much. I keep meaning to use it on more. I'm under the Veg Grower podcast on Instagram, so you should find me quite easily on that. The Veg Grower Pod, I think, is my handle. Um, please, please feel free to tag me in it. I prefer, I prefer for copyright issues that if I'm sending the the uh, the photo direct, I can guarantee I can use it then. Um, just legal things, but please do go ahead and tag me on that. But yeah, 
Yeah, well, great, great lot of photos. Got to say, in the Facebook group, there have been a lot of actions with people sharing photos this week. It suddenly seems to have sprung into life, and it's great. It's great. It's this time of year when everything is coming into play. So coming back to crops in pots as we we start wrapping up on this evening, I think we've had a lot of discussion and a lot of things that we've learned. I think pretty much anything that we can use as a pot can be used, be it a steel water tank, a, um, a baked bean tin, or uh, have, we did mention car tyres, but old drums and stuff can be used. Um, good quality compost is a must and add some additives and try and recycle compost, add in extra fertilizer, feeds, horse manure or any manure. Um, Anything like that uh, helps to add good compost, and it's all about good compost with any plant. Watering is always the biggest issue, so they need a lot more watering. Uh, but mulches can help in setting up watering systems, such as a, a water spike or a solar-powered water system. Um, just a few ideas. Uh, and what else? What else? I think that kind of sums up everything. That we, oh, we can pretty much grow anything in a pot. So uh, we've, we've learned a lot. I know people even grow rhubarb, which is considered a big plant. But I know people do grow rhubarb in a pot. Now, Jim M has joined. Good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Bloody hell. Yes, rhubarb and custard scones sounds lovely. I'll try that. Yeah. I really want to try these rhubarb and custard scones. It does sound delicious. Um, so, yeah. Um, so a bit later in the game, no worries. Now, Jenny just got in at the end. It's a shame Digwell's not here tonight because I think he would probably be able to answer this question best. Richard and everyone, I've tried to research this and so many hits on Google. Are all plastics safe to grow in? I'm going to say this. I would suspect so. Any that are in the UK, I think, would be safe to grow in. I could be wrong, but I think they would be safe to grow in. If you're unsure, then go for food grade containers, food grade plastics, or plastics that are designed for garden centres. But I can't think of an example where plastic might might leach anything dangerous into. The, the soil that we are growing our food in. I could be wrong, but I cannot think of any examples. Plastic generally is treated as quite a, a safe uh, safe way of, um, to speak of the devil, um, most plastics are quite a clean chemical. They're not very good when they break down and break into the soil. Um, but yeah, Digwell joined in uh, right here. Most water supplies give away water gel crystals, water gel granules, seven trained do. Don't know about my water, but I'll check that out and see if they do. Uh, I've never used water gel. I'm, well, I have used water gel, but when, they, when I've bought plants that have got water gel in the bottom, I've used them for that. Um, and Stuart says, I will send you a picture of the ingredients and recipe later. Please do. Please do, because that might make it onto the podcast tomorrow, because I'm looking for a recipe that I can do quite cheaply. That would be good. Um, here we go. Plastics need to be BPA-free for agriculture. So, yes, BPA-free, um, which I think most plastics in the UK are or that you're likely to use for this, uh, there may be some that are not BPA-free. But generally speaking, like if you're using a drinks bottle, that's going to be okay, I suspect. Like I said, I knew Digwell would have the answer for that. Um, <laughs> wealth of knowledge in that guy, in that guy. It's been a good show tonight, I've got to say. It's been good. It's been a really good conversation. Phone lines have been busy. The videos have been great. The photos have been great. <coughs> we even had somebody zap in as well. So, all a really good show. 
Ian Bello says, is that green stuff you get in flower displays good to pot at the bottom of a tub? The green stuff, you mean like the fake grass? Is that what you're talking about? Um, I, I, I think it would be okay. It's plastic, so I probably wouldn't recommend it. If anything, pot at the bottom of a tub. Um, polystyrene can be good to go at the bottom of a tub, actually. A lot of people do use polystyrene. Uh, but I personally, I just put a rock, a simple rock over the hole with the bottom. And then I, I might add perlite or biochar. And then that's it. I try, I personally try to be as natural as possible. Um, uh, Digwell there says... Um, A bit late, LOL, but I had a family crisis. Drunk driver hit my daughter's car. She's okay. Very sorry to hear that. Very sorry to hear that indeed. Um, oh, yeah. Who drink drives this day and age? I um, don't understand it. Very sorry. I hope your daughter's okay is the important thing. I know you said she is okay, but, yeah. What a nightmare. Uh what is custard? Over here, custard is a baked egg dessert. Um, so what is custard? I think we we have, it is basically an egg dessert, but we have it in more, uh, I know what you're talking about, you're talking like um, egg custard, custard tarts, those solid sort of thing. The custard we have is almost like a sauce, an egg, a custardy sauce, egg vanilla sauce. Um, I'm trying to think how to describe it. Sure, somebody will come in here in a minute and describe that for me. Uh, Jenny, oh my goodness, Digwell, send her a love. Scary for you. Oh, indeed, that was scary. Uh, sorry to hear that, Digwell. As long as the kids of the car can, all, car can always get fixed. Oasis is banned is by most societies now, microplastics. Oh, is that what the stuff what Ian was on about? The Oasis. Um, I didn't know that was banned. Uh Alice also says, uh, does Ian mean Oasis? Um, I'm gonna say I think that is now banned from what I understand. I uh, I saw somebody, where was it? I think it was B and M. They were selling compostable sponges. That might that might work uh quite well in in place of oasis um, as an option. Um, sorry, I'm doing it. I, I, you, I'm doing a bit of the uh, blocking here for, as well at the moment. Thomas Street, blimey, Digwell, sending hugs from up the M5, indeed. And Beatrice, sorry to hear that, Digwell, but good to hear the daughter is okay. Uh, no license, no insurance. They should be thrown to prison then. Indeed, they should be thrown into prison. Um, Anna Jones says, yes, Oasis was banned at Chelsea this year. I did not know that. Did not know that. I don't pay much attention to flower cutting, so that's probably why. Um, custard cream and glaze, as the French call it. Yeah. Um, Cream and glaze, as the French call it. For that was for the uh, Idaho was asking what custard is, what we mean by custard. Uh, Digwell says, thanks all. I will send your love. Um, indeed, indeed. Uh, Digwell also says, there is a new oasis, but it is rubbish. See, I always hear oasis and I think of the band. It shows how, how little I pay attention to, to flower arranging. But my neighbor Nan used to do a lot of it, so... Uh, yeah, um, Oasis. Like I say, I know compostable sponges, I saw B&M selling them. They might be a good replacement if you're looking to pop them in the bottom of a pot to keep it going. Or as Stuart says, you can always put a nappy in the bottom of your pots as well. That's a good idea. Uh, Jenny says, I place an old washing up sponges in the bottom of our flower planters. I wouldn't use them in veg pots. This is why I'm thinking these compostable sponges that I saw, I'm sure it was B&M earlier today um i think it was three four pounds they would probably go quite nicely in that 
So uh, just some food for thought. Now, uh, next week, I've, <laughs> I've got next week's show already planned. Uh, so if you want to send in some videos or photos of what we're, what next week's discussion is. And this is a question that came in. It was in our Facebook group by Kate. Do you grow plants from seed or by plug plants or potted plants for in terms of vegetables? Quite an interesting question, I thought. And I'll, I'll save myself. Um, I'll save my opinions for that for next week, but hopefully that will get everybody a few ideas of what you can discuss or share your thoughts on that for next week. Um, I think we call that custard sauce. It probably is custard sauce, yeah. So I sometimes forget that uh, people in other countries don't speak or don't have the same terminology as we have. Uh, hard work to make a daffodil sand up in a bikini vase with rags, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've never had to try to do that, to be honest. Um, not that I've got anything against flower arranging. It's just not my cup of tea. I remember, where was I? A few years ago, I was at a flower show, and uh, oh, the... The, the, the flower arranging guy on TV uh, was chatting to him for a bit and he, he, he loves it. He absolutely loves flower arranging. Just not my cup of tea at all. Uh, Digra says, that's a good question. I thought it would be. And I think, you know what? I think we're going to wrap this show up. I know it's been a great subject, a great lot of conversation going on this week. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us in this conversation. I think, as I say, next week, we'll be back at six. I am on call, just to warn you all, I am on standby next week. So hopefully I won't get called out, fingers crossed. But if we, if I am called out, we'll do the same as last time. I'll try and do it from a van or something. But what I will do, I'll try and get everything prepared in advance. Uh, so all the photos, if you can get them sent to me as soon as possible, really much really appreciate it um not that that's any pressure on anyone because i know a lot of people do uh do try and do it on the sunday when they are remembering but next week i am on call we will still go live regardless at six o'clock as we always do uh on the podcast well i'm talking about the veggie pod and grow bags if you are interested in that there will be for the supportive members a podcast coming out later on this evening so i'd like to thank you all for watching if you've enjoyed it please do give us a thumbs up a like subscribe uh click the notification bell to know when we go live and all that jazz that we say at the end of every week um uh, what else? What else? What else? If anybody is interested, I've got my supporters club. Head to the uk uh, to become a member of our supporters club. I think that just about covers it all up now. Thanks so much for joining me. This has been a great show. I've really enjoyed it. And best of all, looking at the numbers this evening, it's been a really received uh, show. So thank you so much, everybody. Till next time. Please take care. I've just realised I haven't set myself up yet for leaving, so we'll quickly do that. But, yeah, until next time, please take care. I'll see you again then.